Hey there, good morning everybody. Welcome. It is Saturday, the 12th of March, 2022, 8.30 in the morning. <clears throat> There's my morning <laughs> clearing of the throat. We're in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 this morning. Pardon me, finishing up this short book. Only five chapters today. We're done. We will start First or Second Thessalonians tomorrow. Do both of these together. I think there's only three chapters in Second Thessalonians. Uh, anyhow, <clears throat> we're finishing up here. We talked about what happens to Christians when they die before the Lord's return. Yesterday, the Thessalonian church was concerned. They thought the Lord was coming back during all of their lifetimes, and then certain of them started to pass away. And so the word sleep is used when referring to Christians who die. We never die. Those of us who accept Christ as Savior, we have eternal life. So we just move from this world to the next. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So let's pray and we'll cover chapter number five here this morning. Father, thank you for this book and what we've gleaned from it. Thank you for today and what we'll learn. I pray you'll give us your mind, give us wisdom as we do. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, verse number one, 1 Thessalonians 5. Hope you follow along in your Bible with me. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. So Paul's teaching the church here that when the Lord re returns for us, it'll come when no one's expecting it. You go to sleep, your guard isn't up, you don't expect anything to happen, and yet here it comes. So <clears throat> that is the way that the rapture, the return of the Lord, is going to occur as well. Jesus himself used this same terminology as a thief in the night. Even the Lord Jesus said, I do not know when I will return only my father knows that. And so that is knowledge that God has chosen to withhold from the person of the son. It's pretty incredible how some of these things work out. And so <clears throat> this church knows, he says, I don't need to tell you, you know, it says a thief in the night. Verse three, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So just when everybody thinks that everything's calm and peaceful and fine, that's when everything will be unleashed. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. So, <coughs> we here are told that we're the children of light, we're the ones who are awake. It is those who sleep and those who are drunken, those who exist in the darkness. He's just drawing a, a comparison between the lost world and saved people. Those who are lost have no desire, no understanding of the seasons of the time and when the Lord should return. He told us as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. And so we get it, we understand, and we're watching and we're aware the lost world is not. They don't care. They're eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage, going about life as usual, but we're aware. Be sober. <clears throat> it means to be paying attention. It doesn't mean not drunk. It means take things seriously. It doesn't mean to be humorless, for sure, but be aware of what's going on and know what we ought to do. And then I stopped intentionally here <clears throat> at this verse, number nine, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. <clears throat> that, <clears throat> excuse me, that phrase, for God hath not appointed us to wrath, is important. There are those who believe that Christians will still be on the earth during the tribulation period. Well, there's a seven-year tribulation period in which God does what? He pours out his wrath upon the earth. 
And so we're not going to be here for that. There are several positions. One is called pre-tribulational rapture, meaning we're going to be taken out of this world before the tribulation begins. Then there are those who believe in a mid-tribulational rapture where we'll be taken out of this world after it ends. And then there's those who are post-tribulational, meaning the Christians are going to survive the entire seven-year tribulation period on the earth. <clears throat> the trouble is those mid and post, uh, mid-trib and post-trib, they contradict this verse right here. God hath not appointed us to wrath. Nowhere in the Bible are God's people ever judged along with the wicked. The wrath of God is not poured out on them. Here we are in 1 Thessalonians. Go all the way back to the book of Genesis, and you've got Abraham pleading with God to spare the righteous from the wrath that he'll pour out on the wicked. And so he, he says, will you not spare the righteous uh, from the judgment of the wicked? And God says, I will. And he does. He pulls Lot and his wife and his two unmarried daughters out of the city because they're righteous. The others were not, and therefore they were destroyed. Noah is righteous. God spares him. The rest of the world is destroyed. God gave those people a chance to get in the ark with Noah. He preached for 120 years. But nowhere in the Bible can you find God's people suffering the wrath of God along with the rest of the world. So we're not going to be here during the tribulation period. Now, if you're a mid or a post-trib uh, guy kind of person, God bless you. You knock yourself out, but I'm not going to be here. All right. <clears throat> whether we live together or whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with Christ. Uh, wake, whether we're alive, sleep, whether we're dead, we're with Christ. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even all as also ye do. So build each other up, comfort each other, be there for one another. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you. So we're shifting gears here now. We're done with <clears throat> this concept of the end times and the return of Christ and, and the removal of God's people. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So there's three roles here for these particular people that are being discussed. Know them which labor among you, those who serve and work in the ministry and are over you in the Lord. So those who are your leaders in Christianity. So it would be pastors and uh, spiritual leaders of, of that uh, ilk and admonish you, those who encourage you and prod you to do right and to love the Lord. And so he tells them here, this is how you're to treat them, to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. And so we're supposed to look at our spiritual leaders and we're to esteem them very highly in love for the sake of their work. <clears throat> when, when pastors are encouraged, their work flourishes. When we're discouraged, the work suffers. And so he's saying here, be a help to your spiritual leaders, encourage them, pray for them, love them, esteem them very highly, look up to them, and follow them. And then he says, and be at peace among yourselves. Probably, and I might have mentioned this the last day or two, one of the greatest struggles that pastors have, and at least that I know I have as a pastor, is when my people aren't getting along. Uh, the people that I love, that I pastor and oversee, when they're bickering and and fighting and carrying on, uh, not getting along when they're nitpicking. Uh, it's, it's, it's a terrible, terrible time because on, on one hand, I wasn't called to be a babysitter. I was called to be a pastor. Uh, I'm not supposed to be a referee. I'm supposed to be a pastor. And God's people, as a, especially as adults, should know how to get along with each other without having to have someone else intervene and, and you know, okay, you, you all play nice now. Be at peace among yourselves. Mind your own business. Stay in your own area. We preached a sermon called Stay on Your Own Rug a few weeks ago. Uh, leave other people alone. Quit 
judging them. Quit meddling in their affairs. Quit sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Quit getting offended all the time. Quit, (laughs) you know, like I said, nitpicking people. Oh, they didn't say hello to me, or I didn't like the tone of voice they used when they said hello. You know what? Just shut up, grow up, and behave like an adult. How about that? There, a little rant from a pastor here from 1 Thessalonians 5.13. Verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. So, when there are uh, people behaving within the church in an unruly manner. <clears throat> so you warn them, hey, that's not the way to do it. You know, back off, relax, leave them alone. Comfort the feeble-minded. So those who are always anxious and worrying and struggling, you got to comfort those people. Support the weak, those who are prone to temptation and sin and falling. Be patient toward all men. And so helping one another, <clears throat> getting, getting each other to uh, love one another and, and put up with each other, if you would, forbear one another. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. So if someone does you wrong, don't do them wrong in return. God said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You, you know, if someone smites you on your right cheek, you turn to him the other also. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore. These are several very short verses. Rejoice evermore. God's people ought to be known for their rejoicing, their celebrating, their praising, their enthusiasm. Pray without ceasing. As you go through your day, it should be a matter of prayer. You know, you don't have to be in a church to pray. You don't have to be on your knees to pray. You don't have to fold your hands to pray. You don't have to close your eyes to pray. You Now, you can do all of those things, and there might ought to be some time when you get alone and you just pray. But as you go through your day, pray, talk to the Lord uh, as you go about your day. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. <clears throat> so we're grateful for all things, the good and the bad. Verse 19, quench not the Spirit. That means when the Holy Spirit is speaking to your heart, you don't push him out. You don't ignore him. You accept what he's saying to you. Despise not prophesying. That means don't get upset at hard preaching. When you hear preaching that that corrects you and and calls you out on bad behavior, <clears throat> don't you know get mad at that. Prove all things. Hold fast that which is good. So when you do hear teaching and preaching in the Bible or you hear philosophy, co- you know compare it to the word of God. See if it's true or not. And if it is, then hold fast to it. Abstain from all appearance of evil. That means when anyone sees you, they shouldn't think ill of you. They shouldn't think, oh, they're getting ready to sin. Oh, they're not behaving like a Christian would behave. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, set you apart for his use. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who will also will do it. Brethren, pray for us. Greet all the brethren with an holy kiss. Of course, we don't do that in our culture, do we? I charge you by the Lord that this epistle be read unto all the holy brethren. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. And Paul signs off there. Often as he wraps up an epistle, you'll see verses like that, uh, just some encouragements. This one's a little bit unique. Sometimes he mentions people by name, greet this person, greet this person, this person says hello, and so forth. But he ends with pray for us, greet everybody, <clears throat> read this epistle to everyone, and the grace of God be with you. So there you have it, First Thessalonians. Uh, we'll pick up first, Second Thessalonians tomorrow, if I get my numbers straight, that is. Let's see, I'm pretty sure there's three chapters in Second Thessalonians. There are. So uh, one tomorrow, two on Monday, three on, on Tuesday, and then we'll jump to another place in the scripture. Thanks so much for watching today. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here 
and I will see you uh, tomorrow morning. We broadcast it because it's the Lord's Day, uh, 8 o'clock in the morning. Remember also that we have time change tonight. You're going to lose an hour of sleep. So turn your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed, and that way you won't miss Sunday school tomorrow. All right, thanks so much for watching. God bless you. Have a wonderful Saturday.